Hey boys and girls, this is another unboxing um, sort of style video. Uh, this is obviously for a new Intel motherboard that I can't mention what chipset, what processor it takes and so forth. And you're probably wondering uh, a little bit about sort of, you know, why this looks so bare. Now there is an outer sleeve for this box and this is the Gigabyte G1 Sniper M5 motherboard. So it's micro ATX and based on the uh, Sniper 5, which we've already looked at. Um, you may have already seen that video, you may not. If you haven't, check it out, it is on our YouTube channel and on eTechnics.com. Now, we can't show you the packaging purely because of NDA reasons. I am bound by it by Gigabyte, as well as sort of being bound by what I can actually tell you and what I can say from an Intel point of view. So I'm, I can't really tell you what the chipset is, can't tell you its code name, can't tell you anything to do with the processor and can't tell you anything, and I mean anything, to do with, uh, with performance and benchmarks. So more today is going to be about sort of an aesthetic side of you, having a look at this, um, what comes included accessory wise and so forth. So box wise, yeah, very, very simple. Uh, the camera should hopefully be able to pick this up, but it's got sort of a camouflage feel to it. So you can see there's like a black here and a green here kind of theme going on. And obviously that's all down to being a G1 sniper series motherboard and part of the G1 killer range. Now opening it up, we can see that we get tons of little accessories, bits and bobs and so forth. So starting things off, we've got a NVIDIA SLI bridge, just a, a normal single SLI bridge. We've got a rear I.O. panel, uh, which has obviously got the G1 Killer branding on there. Uh, four USB 3.0 ports, as we can see in the white, display port, HDMI, another HDMI, DVI, uh, lots of stuff going on, lots of different connectivity options. We have some SATA cables, so we've got two here and another two here with uh, one, so so we've got four in total, and two of them, yeah, are uh, they've got the right angled connectors on here with the locking clip mechanism, which is always nice to see. We have a uh, driver utility uh, disc as well as a Gigabyte branded case badge sticker. User guide for the G1 Sniper M5. Uh, M5. So yeah, um, some people may use this, some people may not. Inside, lots of information on the BIOS, uh, which all I can really say about the BIOS is it's very, very shiny and very nice, and you're all gonna love it. Um, that's pretty much all I can say, because I can't really show you. Uh, we've got the multilingual installation guidebook as well, which always comes included. We've got the OP amp upgrade kit, or op amp upgrade kit. Uh, so you get one additional OP amp included, and uh, then we get these tweezers as well. I'll explain about that a little bit more uh, in detail as we look at the board, because it does have um, sort of, you know, improved audio over um, your bog standard audio, and this really just sort of, you know, helps to improve it. So opening this part up, we can see the motherboard itself. So just gonna move this box out of the way. Obviously comes in an anti-static bag, and taking it out of there gives us a, uh, a first look at how the motherboard uh, looks. So straight away, if you've already seen the G1 Sniper 5 unboxing overview kind of thing like this that I've already done, then yeah, you'll notice that there's a lot of similarities in terms of it's exactly the same but smaller. Now, not exactly the same, obviously the colour scheme is, but um, yeah, a lot of features are slightly different in terms of uh, the cooling, um, how big it is obviously, but yeah, this is the M5, so it's micro ATX. So micro ATX form factor, we've got the black PCB that Gigabyte's gone for uh, with this motherboard and all of their new uh, motherboards in this particular range of Intel chipset boards that I can't mention the name of. But yeah, you're going to see this black PCB on even the lower end models, which is really, really nice to see. Gigabyte aren't cutting any corners with this one. So we've got that, we've got the green colour scheme as well, which we're all familiar with on the G1 um, Sniper series. You know, we saw it on the G1 Assassin and, uh, and so forth. Uh, so yeah, really, really nice colour scheme there. We've got the green dim slots, we've got the green expansion slots, green cooling, uh, which sort of works really, really nicely. Now, in terms of cooling, you can see if we come in closer to the CPU socket, that we've got Gigabyte branded uh, passive cooler, ultra durable as well, and this follows around with a little heat pipe connecting it in the middle. Now, this obviously uh, helps to keep the, uh, the phases nice and cool when you're overclocking that. In terms of overclocking, I can't mention, obviously, how far things can be pushed, but you can see that we've got an eight pin power connector up here, which is gonna be powering um, you know, the CPU socket area and delivering nice clean power to it. We've got CPU fan headers up here uh, for uh, obviously your air cooler or your all-in-one cooler. And speaking of air coolers, you can see around the CPU socket that there is plenty of room to uh, 
obviously have larger CPU coolers on there as well. Dim slots, we've got four of them. I can't mention uh, obviously what speeds they accept because that's all down to Intel certification. But uh, yeah, it's most likely going to accept up to 32 gigabytes of DD DDR3 memory. And obviously XMP profiles are supported as well. Now for the sort of overclockers uh, around, we have got CMOS switch, reset switch. We've got a couple of uh, little switches here for a BIOS switch. Another one, I'm not quite sure what that is, but uh, we will look into that in a little bit more detail as we actually did a review and everything. Nice big red shiny power button. We've got voltage checkpoints as well. Um, if you are doing overclocking and obviously you want to check your voltages and make sure that they're accurate and correct because the BIOS doesn't always report the most accurate, then yeah, bung a multimeter on here and you'll get that. Also for the overclockers, we've got a little debug LED just over here as well. 24 pin ATX power connector. We've got a USB 3.0 native port over here for connecting a USB 3.0 um, ports on your chassis. SATA wise, we have three um, banks of two. So we've got six SATA ports in total. Obviously it says SATA 3 here. It says SATA 3 over here. I'm sure you can guess that they're all SATA 3, but I cannot confirm nor deny whether they are SATA 3 and whether they all run off the chipset or not because I'll get in trouble if I do. So uh, yeah, we've got them. Obviously they're all the same color, so you can pretty much guess that they're all gonna be running off of uh, one chip as opposed to having a Marvel or an Asmedia chip or anything like that. Now we've got another um, cooling solution down here. So we've got a passive, very, very low profile, G1 killer branded with a little skull on it. Um, Heatsink, which obviously covers over the uh, chipset. So once again, yeah, I can't mention what chipset, but yeah, it's sitting under here. So it gives you an idea as to sort of how big or how small it is. And yeah, this is very, very low profile. So it does sit under the sort of top end of the uh, of the expansion slots. So you can see that you're not going to have any obstruction. It's not too obtrusive when it comes to your expansion slots and your graphics cards. Now, in terms of front panel headers, you can see that we've got the usual uh, front panel LED and switches and buttons and so forth over here. We've got a uh, USB, sorry, there is a little clear CMOS. I don't know if you can see that little clear CMOS just in there and um, just sort of sit in there. No jumper on it, but yeah, you can easily um, obviously short that out by connecting it with a strip of, my, uh, strip of wire, screwdriver, anything like that. So we've got two USB 2.0s here. We've got another system fan header here, another system fan header here, front audio connectors here next to the uh, Soundcore 3D audio uh, chipset and everything here and then yeah we've got this little chip here which is actually the removable op amp um, chip so this can be easily removed just like you've seen on motherboards where you can easily remove the bios chip and you can replace it with the other one um, i'm not quite sure we haven't really looked into sort of why and what the need is for that um, are they expecting it to break and you need to replace it or is the other one better in terms of audio who knows maybe it's just uh, yeah a spare but yeah, the thing I always love about the audio side of things is they always have like these really nice sort of green capacitors, green and gold capacitors, whenever they do this on the G1 Sniper Series boards. So we have got, you know, some really, really nice capacitors going on, some really, really nice features in terms of the audio. There is also a system fan header just here. So you, straight away, you can see this board has got a shed load of uh, fan headers. So they really have sort of fought through in terms of cooling and people who are going to be overclocking on this. You've got to remember, it is a micro ATX board. So you, straight away, you're not going to expect fantastic results when it comes to overclocking. Or are you? I'm going to leave you with that thought because I know how well this overclocks or how well it doesn't overclock. I'm not giving too much away. But yeah. You'll be surprised. That's all I can really say. Now, in terms of the rear I.O., this is where things get quite interesting because generally we see sort of the same old stuff um, whenever we look at the rear I.O. Now, with this board, it's actually quite nice. It's quite refreshing to see loads of different style connectors instead of the same, just USB, USB, USB. So we have got our USBs here. We've got two USB 2.0s. Uh, so they're black, so they're not high speed. They're not USB 3.0, just bog standard USB 2.0. We've got a PS2 uh, keyboard mouse combo port over here. Why they've switched these over, I don't know. Normally you'd see that port at the top and the USBs at the bottom, but they've done exactly the same with the uh, G1 Sniper 5, the full size daddy board. Now we've got a DVI port over here as well. We've got a HDMI, display port, another HDMI. We've got four lots of USB 3.0. We've got gigabit ethernet LAN. 
and then we've got our audio as well so we've got an sp diff port and then we've got the uh audio as well which i believe if it's the same as the g1 sniper 5 is going to be 10 channel audio so 8 plus 2 and they are gold connectors as well now normally you'd see the sort of coloring around here but you don't need to worry because the rear io sort of explains exactly what all the ports are, in terms of audio and everything are on here as well and that's pretty much it there is one other thing that i wanted to show you which maybe I'd, yeah it picks it up on the back so you can see that we've got this sort of line along here and then it follows down over here as well and you can see there's tiny little leds around it now the whole reasoning behind this is it's an emi shield which uh, stops interference to the motherboard uh, in terms of the audio and this all lights up nice and green so when this is sitting in your chassis and you've got the nice green color in you might have a, a corsair h100i like us and you may have changed the color to green on the corsair logo on the actual block this is all going to light up green sort of around here as well and it's going to look really really nice and that, my friends, is pretty much it in terms of the aesthetics of the G1 Sniper M5. I wish I could go into more detail, especially when it comes to performance benchmarks and what you know Intel have done. But this was more about sort of you know what Gigabyte have done with this board in terms of features, uh, aesthetics, and how they've sort of developed on from obviously their previous G1 Killer series range of motherboards so there you go hopefully you enjoyed this video remember to sub uh, like subscribe and all the other usual stuff tell your friends to come to eTechnics we're amazing we do the best videos blah 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 um, but yeah we will have full uh, benchmark performance on this board when the NDA lifts I wish I could tell you when the NDA lifts but I don't think I can and I don't really want to get in trouble so um, yeah that is pretty much it for the G1 Sniper M5 Micro ATX board. I can tell you this is going to be one of the boards that is going to be launching that's going to surprise the hell out of you. So there you go. Thank you very much and uh, yeah remember to like and subscribe. Until next time see you later.